You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business, the podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. This podcast is being brought to you by my inspiring new book titled Courage is a Muscle, Using Heart to Power Your Entrepreneurial Dreams. You can grab your copy today on Amazon. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks so much for tuning in and checking out another hot episode of SOB Style of Business, the podcast. This is your host, Keetra, and today's guest is Ariel D. Smith. I stuttered. I had to stall because I started thinking about the food, the culture, the music, the deliciousness, deliciousness. <laughs> of this podcast today and um you know we just gonna roll with it so Errol D. Smith like I said she is the host of the Food Truck Scholar podcast and I'm telling you y'all need to check out that Instagram feed check out some of her old episodes and um this is gonna be one of the episodes that kind of leaves you a little bit hungry a little bit later so anyway let me drop it over to Errol Errol drop that introduction for us let's get rolling and let's get into this interview can't wait hey what's up everybody of the Food Truck Style of Podcast, Ariel Smith Teachers. Thank you so much for having me on your platform. You know, I can't, I can't deny, I can't confirm or deny that you probably gonna be hungry after this. I'm gonna leave you with some places <laughs> that you should go, some places you should check out. And clearly, you know, it's Wednesday, so words are hard. I'm stuttering a little bit too, girl. So you're not alone. Yeah, I tell you what. When I was getting, as I was doing the intro, I was kind of scrolling, like looking at some food. <laughs> Right. So you, it's kind of like you almost pause, like, let me get a plate of that. You know, let me get a side of that. And let's see what that what that do. You know, so uh, oh, anyway, man. yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. So let's let's jump into it. Tell us a little bit about I guess let's start here. Give us a little bit about how you got started, you know, specifically, uh, you know, because we got the food industry and there, there's the food truck industry. Tell us a little bit about how you were able to kind of get that going and what piqued your interest to, to kind of delve into that with the podcast. Uh, I love when people ask me that question because when I tell them that I actually am a PhD student that studies food truck culture, number one, they don't believe it. And then number two, when I tell them that I started studying the food truck industry because I was hangry, you know, I I was hungry and I was angry. I got, I remember it was my first year at Purdue and originally my research was going to be um, African-American entrepreneurship education. So basically where do we go as African Americans to learn how to become entrepreneurs? When you're in social studies textbooks, when you're in business school and you're learning case studies, you do not see black people. So how do we learn entrepreneurship? That was originally my research project. But there was a day I got out the shower and as any millennial does, I got on Instagram <laughs> and I'm scrolling. <laughs> I'm scrolling. And I've got all of my friends and people I went to school with back home in Birmingham. They're posting all of these food trucks, like Encore Rouge, K&J's Elegant Pastries, Granny's Fish and Grits, and uh, Praise God's Value Magic at the time. And, like, all these food trucks are out. And I felt a little disrespected. I was like, right. now, how is it? Right. When I gave Birmingham the best 23 years of my life at the time. And I did not see these food trucks for real. I like some of them were out, but by then, but I didn't see them. And then now that I've left, right, all of y'all, and then some more of y'all have decided to pop up. And I'm talking about the plates were good, overflowing with food, seasoned, all type of decadence. Yes, and I'm like, why? Why do I not get a chance to have this? So. I became a little hangry. I'm not even going to lie to you. <laughs> exactly. And, <I'm, laughs> I hear and you. so from there, I went from hangry to just curiosity. I wanted to know, okay, why is it happening right now? You know, why now for all these different, you know, moments it could happen? And so, you know, Birmingham is in a process of gentrification. You yeah. know, that's something yeah. that Birmingham has been going through for some time now, uh, but has ramped up by 2016, 2017. And so I wonder, could food trucks have any relationship to that? Because, you know, there are more people that's moving in. Um, there's a different clientele that's coming in. they got different types of taste. They want to sample the city. They want to, you know, all this type of stuff. 
I wonder, is it that because the property values of these brick and mortars are rising, that maybe some of our African-American entrepreneurs don't have access to purchase them, and so they're going to a food truck right. because of the lower barrier to entry? Because when we know when a place gentrifies, it's usually because of a tech scene, a food scene, a music scene, something along those lines, and Birmingham has a mixture of those going on. Yeah. So when I did some research... I couldn't find anything about black-owned food trucks. I had an article that talked about white-owned food trucks and gentrification. There was some scholarship about Mexican-American and Latinx food trucks and um, the way they in, you know, participate in or resist gentrification. But there's nothing about black entrepreneurs. So it was a question that just stayed in my head until about either that same week or the following week, I had to turn in a midterm paper. And our professor asked us how it was you know, how it was going, yeah. and all of us just stared at each other blankly because ain't nobody saw it. And he said, you know what, don't worry about your dissertation. Your first years, I know you're nervous, you're thinking about your dissertation. Just write me an eight- to ten-page paper about a question that's on your mind. And that was the question that was still on my mind. So I wrote out that paper. He looked at it he said, this is very fascinating. I think... You know, you should be thinking about this. You should be thinking about that. And I said, let me find out. I can <laughs> right. write me. <laughs> let me find out. I can eat my way to a PhD. And so we began. Oh, wow. I love it. I love it. Okay. Yeah, let's let's eat our way to a PhD. I mean, you know, I know it doesn't sound like you want to ever turn out a, a nice plate of things. And what really excited me about you know, having an opportunity to speak with you is that there are just so many, you know, you, you've talked to so many people, you have kind of got an idea and insight of how they were able to, you know, take simple, you know, homemade recipes or ideas and really turn that into profitable businesses. And that's one of the, the things that I'm interested in learning a little bit more about. Um, tell us a little bit about, okay, so we know that, you know, the, the in the PhD part, like that blew me away. Like when I, when, when I was looking at your, your trailer, and it was like, oh, you know, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, just a, a, a good, good old food truck podcast, you know. And you're like, oh no, this is a little bit more than what you what you used to, you know, <laughs> a little bit more than what you think. So when when I was listening to that and that you were actually kind of fusing that, you know, hip hop culture and music culture together to bring this podcast, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is this is interesting. But to think that you could actually, you know, earn your PhD while doing it, I mean, that's that's joy all around, right? You know, so I want to know. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to know, like, what what made you specifically think about the, you know, hip hop music and, and you're just trying to see how those two segue with the uh, I'm sorry, hip hop music yeah. and, and uh, food, food truck culture. You know, I got to shout out a couple of people and uh, groups as a part of this, because, you yeah, know, definitely. nobody gets to where they are by themselves. Um, for one. I'm very grateful to be in the program that is American Studies. So um, a lot of liberal arts and interdisciplinary programs, they allow you to think creatively. They encourage you to do that. And, you know, I have the privilege to be in a program like American Studies at Purdue that welcomes thought. So we have scholars that explore, you know, Booker T. Washington with popular culture, yeah. pound cake and black women's sexuality, Justin Timberlake and, you know, nature and all this type of stuff. So, like, I'm in a space where it uh, celebrates and encourages diversity of thought. So that's number one. Uh, and number two, um, I had just started learning as much as I could about different food truck owners. So, of course, at that point in time, I'm learning about the Food Minati, is a collective of Black men entrepreneurs and, and some Black women as well, out in uh, Los Angeles, I started learning about Trap Kitchen. I started learning about how they were catering uh, music video promos and all that different type of stuff. So there was that story there. And the more I just started talking to my colleagues, right, because when you want to flesh out ideas, iron sharpens iron. And so one yeah. of my colleagues who is now Dr. Couture Nix, me and her was talking, I was sharing with her the different stories that I've learned by the food truck owners I've been following. And she said, you know what? This makes me think about Africa Bambada story. This is making me think about so-and-so, so-and-so story. And she said, you need to probably dig back into the origins of hip hop or the origin narrative of hip hop and see if there are really some similarities there. And that came out over us having dinner or lunch one day. And so I said, huh, 
I started looking and I started seeing that there were artists like Sean Solomon who did um, a whole like little mini painting series about different hip hop and other music genre artists if they had a food truck. Oh, wow. I think yeah. there was like one called Out Casseroles, or I remember the late um, Jonathan Gold, famous LA Times writer and journalist, especially about food. He was interviewed uh, about, I want to say about two, three years ago. And he said, these are the underground hip hop artists of our time. So I am yeah. not the first person to make this connection between food trucks and hip hop. I, I will never assert that. Yeah. I give honor where honor is due. But I am the first academic scholar to come in and talk about the relationship between food trucks and hip hop and the way that I do so. Exactly. Love it. Yeah, that's that's and I, I appreciate you putting that so perfectly because, you know, we know that there's obviously a relation with hip hop and, and food. But for you to just kind of go in and dig a little bit deeper and add your own little twist to it. I think that's wonderful. You know, and the more that we know about food entrepreneurs, uh, specifically within the black community, I think that'll kind of help and give other people resources to, to really get their businesses off the ground. Um, and speaking of creativity, What's like now? Now we we're gonna take it a step further because I'm telling you, I've been seeing all types of food trucks. At the beginning of the conversation, you started, you know, mentioning all these places popping up in Birmingham, and you know, had you feeling some type of way, <laughs> you know, because you you mm -hmm. you didn't move on. But like, there's the grilled cheese, there's the you know people that specialize in um, you know French fries and all these different things. Like, what do you what are your thoughts on the creativity part of it? Like. You know, can you can you go wrong with the food truck? Because I even seen like a peanut butter and jelly uh, food truck. Like, can you go wrong with that? Or what are your thoughts on that and creativity? So what I love the creativity. So I, I'm going to give two answers. One, I love the creativity. And two, yes, you can go wrong with a food <laughs> truck, as you can with any business. Right. As you can with any business. Right. Like you can have a great idea, but poor execution. Mm, or yeah. you could have a great idea, but yet you um, don't necessarily have the best quality of food or the best uh, customer service, right? So there are ways that you could go wrong with a food truck. And sometimes it's not necessarily that your customer service is wrong or anything of that nature is bad. It may be sometimes you're just not prepared in terms of the business sense, right? Yeah. And so you're not prepared to do certain things. I'll give you an example. If you're a food truck that has macaroni and cheese a lot on your truck and you're constantly going to Walmart and you're buying those aluminum foil pans, right? You know, those aluminum foil pans. <laughs> right. Like, Fam you're, family you're, reunion, you're, right. You know, <laughs> right. Right. You're constantly buying those as opposed to, you know, investing in like an industrial type of pan and just, you know, exactly. either wash them yeah. out yourself or just hire somebody to bust some suds for you you're losing a lot of money that way very quickly. It's something that's very small, but it adds up over time. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that you put way too many uh, menu items on your menu and you got 15 things because you're the person that really wants to cook everything, but it's an item on there that you love, but people may only order that once or twice a month. Yeah. And you keeping it on your truck, that's a waste of money. So there are ways where a food truck could be wrong or it just come down to the quality. Like you give me chicken wings and it looks like it came from like a little baby chicken or a toddler chicken and not a full grown chicken. And right. I'm like, why am I paying this much money for this? So there are ways that you could go wrong as you could with any business. I don't think a food truck is, is different in that regard. But what I do love about the food truck is the creativity. I, one of my favorite food trucks is in Nashville. It's called the Beignet Bar, oh, wow. ran by Natasha Johnson, and she's also a PhD student. So talking about being a PhD student and running a food truck at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, I love her beignets. She has a peach field beignet that I kind of go for every time I come home or go through Nashville. Um, there's food trucks that just do pudding, like D.C. Pudding is in D.C., you have, uh, I believe, Twisted Grilled Cheese is in Houston. The Turkey Leg Hut is in Houston. So it, it, it's kind of endless what you can do on a truck. And I, I really think that the food truck industry is changing how we think about gourmet cuisine. It's no longer you have to sit down at a fancy white, uh, white cloth dinner table and have gourmet cuisine. 
they're showing you that you can also have that same type of quality food on a truck. Right. And the variety, you know, actually a different day of the week. You know, I remember, yeah. you know, just, you know, when you're when you're kind of coming up and going through college, like just to be able to get the shrimp and the crab legs and the lobster, you know, a little fancy stuff like that. You would have to hit up a red lobster or, you know, a Jones right. Crab Shack or something. But um, also here in Houston, there's, you know, the King Crab and places like that 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 serve that like on the weekends or uh, through the week. I think they are now. You know, they serve that to where you don't have to go into the brick and mortar to to be able to experience those types of foods, which I think is great. Exactly. And, and you know, you're also getting into access here because, yeah. let's be honest, where are Red Lobsters and Joe's Crab Shacks normally positioned? When we're thinking about geographically and spatially, and you're talking about certain foods like that, they're put in places that are middle to upper class. Mm. So what about yeah. those who are lower class, working class, lower socioeconomic status, who want the same foods, right? Right. Yeah. But they don't necessarily have the access. We got to talk about food uh, security. We got to talk about food deserts, food apartheid. You know, Ashanti Reef and many other scholars have talked a lot about this when it comes down to access around food and space. And so another great thing about food is the fact that they're able to make that accessible and affordable because they are mobile. And there are some food trucks that they are intentional about the neighborhoods that they try to frequent the most because they want to break those barriers to access. Right. No, and I think that's perfect. And also a part of, of marketing. Can you touch a little bit of, uh, on the marketing elements of it? Because I know a lot of with Instagram and Facebook, you know, where they can go in and advertise the actual images and really get people excited about where they're going to be at. Like, tell us a little bit about your take on, uh, you know, just making sure that you're positioning your your food truck in the right locations in terms of marketing. In my opinion, you have to have social media. I, I yeah. understand that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and sometimes food truck owners that I talk to, they just say, you know, it's just a lot to do, that they have so many other things going on, and sometimes the social media part, you know, kind of lags. And, you know, as someone that has a lot going on, I can understand that. At the same time, social media is so critical, especially now in the wake of a pandemic where almost everything has gone virtual, uh, social distancing, contactless, digital, all that type of stuff that's taking place. You cannot afford to leave out social media. Social media cannot uh, be an afterthought. It's a critical part of marketing for food trucks. There are food trucks that I did not know existed, but because I put in a city and I said, you know, Houston food trucks, Birmingham food trucks, whatever, yeah. I was able to find that truck, go to their profile, See if they was open if I was visiting that area at that time and patronize them. The mm -hmm. downside, though, is that for food trucks who do not keep a regular social media, it's very hard for people to find them. Right, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been to a city and have, and even, even in local areas that I am right now, and search for a food truck. I can't find an up-to-date you know, post. They haven't posted in two, three years, sometimes seven years. I was like, but I just saw them yesterday, so I know they're in, you know, in service, yeah. but they're not updated. It's critical. And I would say this, you know, number one, you need good photos of your food. That's, that's first and foremost. Um, for a lot of us, we have sometimes the best camera that we need is in our pocket. But other times, you may need someone to take the photos. And it, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars. Yeah. There's probably a college student that is a photography major or a film major that needs to build their portfolio. Sometimes reach out to them. Or a high school student that's like, that, where it's really their thing that they're really passionate about. Help them build their portfolio, yeah. you know, and get those photos in. Also, have a schedule a weekly schedule that goes out about your location. And it's something that can be very simple. You have one photo. It says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or however many days that you're opening. Some food trucks only open Wednesday through Saturday, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And just have the day, have the date, have the location, and the time. And if you're not going to do that, then perhaps you might want to check out different apps 
that you could partner with that could, you know, keep up with your locations and, and whatnot. But that's very critical to have is good photos of your food, regular postings about where you're going to be, and making sure that your contact information is open. And you got to use Instagram. Instagram is basically a free photo album for your work. It's basically a free portfolio. That is what's going to launch people in. I would say Facebook would be a second for me, and that kind of depends on the demographic that your uh, food truck kind of targets because I've seen Instagram work exceptionally well. I've also seen Facebook work pretty well, too, especially when it comes down to Facebook pages and groups around food truck organizing. And then I'll put Twitter probably as as a third or at the bottom. But definitely Facebook and Instagram would be my top two. Top two. Okay, perfect. Yeah, those are some excellent resources um, for anybody who is looking to, you know, just kind of amp up the marketing because that's important. You know, you sometimes you go to those uh, different food trucks and they may have advertised that they'll be open to, you know, seven and they're closed at five. You know, that's, that happens a lot. Um, so I definitely think that's important. And before we get ready to wrap up, let me pick your brain a little bit. Like what what do you as a as an entrepreneur and somebody who, you know, is looking to maybe start putting together some ideas and really get rolling um, as we get ready to go into the new year with with maybe a food truck concept or an idea. Like what would be like two to three different things that you would recommend for that person to do to before they, you know, start looking at actually launching a business? Like what would be like the research you would you would suggest? Well. Of course, look, I got plug in the podcast, listen to the Food Truck Seller podcast. But I will also tell you a couple of things. Number one, you need to decide what type of truck are you going to get. And when I'm saying that type of truck, before we even talk about new or used, are you going to have a dessert truck? Are you going to have a savory type of truck? If that's the case, are you going to have a savory truck? Is this going to be food that you're going to prepare on the truck? Or is this going to be food that is pre you know, pre-prepared at the commissary and you're just using the truck to, like, get the food out there. You need to have an understanding of that because many different counties and health departments, they have different requirements based upon the type of truck that you do. Yeah. Um, After that, you need to figure out, well, honestly, before even that, I would have to ask you, why are you entering into this industry? Mm, Yeah. Because a lot of people come into the food truck industry because they think it's a quick way to make money and that it won't be hard. Right. Yeah. I get that question a lot. And ultimately, if you're not passionate about the work that you're doing, it's going to come out in your food. I've been up to enough countries and enough states and enough cities and tasted enough food to know that. So Be clear if this is something that you really want to do. It's going to be hard days. There's going to be days in the summer where that truck is over 160 degrees. It's going to be days in the winter where it's below 30 degrees on that truck. Are you committed to that? If you're not the person that's going to be on the truck, who is? How well do you trust them? How well do you trust the quality of food that they have? Speaking of quality of food, are you, uh, I think it's, serve safe or safe serve. I always get it confused. But you make sure that you have your food handler certification. Make sure that you've gone through those steps. Um, In terms of your plan, who are you going to go through? Are you going to rent? Are you going to buy? Make sure you do the research on both. There's pros and cons either way. So it's going to be subjective based upon you. Go ahead and build a following before you launch. One of my uh, podcast guests, Crystal McCants, the owner of Trey Pays Rolling Cafe, is a beautiful example of this. I interviewed her before her truck even came out. Why? Because she had already built a following on social media. Oh, wow. And it yeah. won't cost much to do. I forgot to say this, but you can go to Canva, C A N V A dot com. Uh, I use them for a lot of my things. They have templates for all sorts of stuff. They got templates for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter banners, all that type of stuff. You can use it for free. You don't have to pay for the pro package. If you do, it's going to be about $13 a month or whatever. And you can use that and start posting on social media. Go ahead and reserve 
your name. Go ahead and get your Instagram. Go ahead and get your Facebook and post regularly. Let them see the food that you can make and the food that you're planning to have on this truck. So they're like, oh, wow, like, that looks good. So they, you start building this following. Right, so yeah. when the truck drops, it's not a surprise. Right. But there are a lot of things that you can do. And ultimately, it really comes down to research. And make sure that you're truly invested in this before you go deeper into it. Excellent. Love it. Love it, Ariel. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, before we get ready to wrap up, I mean, you've, you've given us the goods. You know, <laughs> you've given us uh, a <laughs> lot of great stuff to work with. But... Um, words of encouragement just whatever you whatever you have on your mind give us a couple of words of encouragement as we wrap up do it for the one when i started my podcast there was a moment in time where only one person listened to my whole interview throughout and i thought it was my best live stream interview only one person (laughs) listened that one person inboxed me immediately after and said it's just what they needed so before i talked to thousands i had to learn to talk to one before you immediately want to serve millions and hundreds. If you can serve the one with your best, you'll go far. Perfect. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I tell you what, you gave me a little bit of comfort when sometimes when I think about my early podcast and whew, wow. Um, <laughs> you know, nobody was listening, but Hey, I kept pumping them out. So we're a little bit, uh, look a little bit different today. And, and uh, thankfully that's the case. And so, Definitely want to encourage you to keep dropping those podcasts. I'm going to be tuning in and checking out and being hangry, <laughs> you know, at the same time. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate you and all that you do. And hopefully, you know, have you back. Um, you know, let's see what 2021 is doing, because I know you got some good stuff going. Um, what else is there? Thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. Let us know. We can find you online, drop your handles and also um, where we can go and listen to the Food Truck Scholar podcast as well. Absolutely. So always follow me on Instagram at the Food Truck Scholar. On Twitter, I'm Food Truck Scholar, is in an A. You can right. also follow me on Facebook, the Food Truck Scholar. But the Food Truck Scholar podcast is available on all your listening platforms from Apple to Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, you name it, I'm on it. And you can also check out the com to also sign up for my mailing list. I have some amazing things that I'm bringing out in 2021 and I would love your support on that and your insight. And so, yeah, so that's where you can find me. I would love to engage with you. You can always email me at the food truck seller at gmail.com. We're also bringing in season three, March, 2021. So if you are a food truck owner that wants your story to be told, contact us. We would love to have you. And we also have a couple more spots open for sponsors. So if you're related to the food truck industry in any way or any um, resources for the food truck industry, whether it's uh, POS systems, whether it's um, food truck manufacturing, restaurant depots, whatever, if you could be a possible fit, we want to sit down and talk to you and see how we can grow this together. Because at the end of the day, we're all about making sure that the food truck industry has resources and that their stories are being told. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, thanks so much, Errol. We appreciate you. You take care. We look forward to having you back. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.